This one's very important and this one is missed by the majority of sterile processing departments. <laughs> Hey sterile processing professionals, Brandon the Sterile Guy here. In today's video, we're gonna talk about how to properly load a steam sterilizer. If you're in any of the SPD Facebook groups, I'm sure you've seen this question asked over and over again. Can I put peel packs above wrap trays? Or can a wrap tray go underneath a metal container? Just what's the proper way to load a steam sterilizer? I'm not sure if some people were just never taught the right way, or maybe they were taught in only way and not the concepts of why we stagger things that way. Cause you could easily have a load of a few wrap trays, a few container trays and some peel pack and it'd be obvious. But then when you get weird configured loads where maybe you just have wrapped and peel packed and small wrap, and then you're not exactly sure how to organize that. Or it could just be brain farts in the moment. We're all susceptible to brain farts. But I wanna set the standard right here so we're all on the same page. Amy discusses the proper sterilizer loading in chapter 10 of ST79 2017. And on page 62, there's even this really cool illustration drawn by somebody that shows the different configurations of sterilizer carts and the proper way those are configured. So let's talk about the different types of items that we're sterilizing in the steam sterilizers. There's the paper plastic pouches, there's instrument trays, there's textile packs, there's utensils and glassware, rigid containers, and liquids. Now, liquids you probably are not sterilizing. I can't imagine, I haven't actually come across a sterile processing that is still doing that. Um, but liquids, we don't have to worry about because if you're sterilizing liquids, they are done completely separate of everything else. So that won't even be conclude, included in this configuration piece. Now with all the remaining items, it all comes down to the sterilization barrier, whether that's a wrap, a peel pouch, or some type of rigid container. Instrument sets and glassware are both mentioned, but not specifically in the context of configuration, but more in the context of that they are sterilized and there's different things you need to keep in mind when sterilizing them, like with glassware, pitchers, stuff like that, you wanna make sure that they are upside down so they are not retaining moisture within the glass itself. And then instrument um, trays, they could be either wrapped or containerized. So it's important to know which of the sterilization barrier things that you're using. So let's start with the most dense metal item. So that would be anything with a rigid container. So rigid container, because it's so dense with metal and whatnot, it needs to go absolutely at the bottom of everything. Metal containers are always at the bottom. Now rigid containers can be above other rigid containers. They can never be above a peel pouch or a wrapped item or anything else. Having the dense metal items below the absorbent items such as wrap allows for the proper ventilation of the steam as it's exhausting. Having it the other way around will cause those metal pans to drip down onto those absorbent items, which is taking you know liquid from the outside of the container, maybe rust from the, from the sterilizer cart, something, and dripping it and then causing a strike through within those absorbent materials down below. That's not a good thing. So now here's one of the ultimate questions. What goes above the metal container? Is it peel pouches or is it wrapped items? What if I told you that it didn't matter? The illustration in Amy on page 62 actually shows separate configurations of peel pouches above wrapped items. And then it shows another one with wrapped items above peel pouches. The fact is they're both absorbent. So they're both the same type kind of, of packaging. Now nothing in there specifically states um, which one goes above the other, but we do need to use some common sense in there. So if we have a kidney basin wrapped above peel pouches, that's probably not a big deal. That's probably just fine. But if we have, let's say a wrapped large fragment tray with lots of metal in it above peel pouches, now that's probably a problem. So we should really think about density how we're putting those things. So peel pouches usually have the least density. Why not put them on top? And then any other wrapped items, which are a little bit more thick with metal and, and density, 
let's put them underneath. And then your big metal containers at the bottom. And then the other thing people generally ask is, so we talked about what is at the bottom, what can go above and below, but what about beside? So when it comes to beside each other, it actually doesn't matter. You can put a metal container right next to peel pouches. You can put wrapped items right next to containers. That's not a big issue. It's all about underneath and above. And then what is one of the most important things with, actually it's gonna be two important things with uh, sterilizing peel pouches. Do you put paper to paper? Do you put plastic to plastic? Neither. You put plastic to paper. So they should all basically face the same way and they should be up on their side to ensure that they get the most easy steam penetration of the peel pouch. Other things to keep in mind about sterilizer loading is think of spacing. So if you're stacking all these like wrapped items really close to each other, you're not leaving room for steam to circulate around the entire trays or wrapped items themselves. I always like to use the one or two finger rule between trays to make sure that there's room for steam to circulate between those trays and to pe penetrate from every angle of those trays. Second thing to consider is the height and the width of your sterilizer chamber. So as you're loading those carts, you wanna make sure stuff isn't sticking past appropriate height level of the sterilizer so that as you're pushing stuff in and out, it's scraping the inside of the chamber. That should not be happening. You should be making sure everything fits within a certain parameter of that sterilizer cart. And lastly, this one's very important and this one is missed by the majority of sterile processing departments. Did you know that your sterilizers have weight limits for sterilization cycles? Yeah, actually the amount, the entire total weight of the cart and the trays that you're putting in there, there is a maximum weight. And if you're exceeding that, that's a no-go. There is uh, sterile processing instrument tracking systems like SPM, I know for sure, can actually, you can record all the weights of your items and your trays and everything with an SPM so that when you go to build a sterilizer load, it actually calculates the weight and it'll tell you if you exceed the weight for that sterilization cycle so that you can remove however many items you need to to meet those standards. It's very important that you're following that Joint Commission is picking up on that and they're starting to figure that out. Um, that's been something they haven't even thought about ever, but it's definitely something they're starting to pick up on. So you need to make sure that you are not over loading your sterilizers. Not to mention that if you're overloading them, you are exceeding the parameters that they use to validate those sterilizers, which means that you might not be completely sterilizing all your stuff. And that, my friends, is some key basic information for sterilizer loading. And I really hope that helps to kind of use common sense and in a structure on how to build sterilizer loads. Any topics or videos you want to see, don't forget to leave them in the comments down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I love you guys, and I'll catch you in the next one. Mm -hmm.